Hi, this is Kelvin from Kelty Arts. So today we're going to talk about how to hack together a extrude modifier or shell modifier, whichever you call it. So here we have a single-sided mesh and then right beside it you see a uh, extruded version of that. The cool thing about this is it's live. So whatever edits you make on this will be transferred over to the other functions like bevel. They work fine. Or, you know, stuff like you want to add a I'm going to add a hole, some kind of hole, doesn't matter. And then just up divisions, delete it, see? It updates with you. Cool thing is you can also add bevels. And that's not all. You can do bevel profiles. Check this shit out. They're all editable. Look at that. It's all tweakable, man. How neat is that? So, I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, hide that mesh. Let's just make a duplicate of this. So we can start fresh. Basically, you have a mesh like this. What you do is the magic command called poly duplicate. Can't spell, apparently. And what that does, it, it duplicates another mesh, but connects it, the mesh history. So whatever you do, in this one will reflect on the other one. So once that's done, you want to open up a uh, node editor. So just clean all the shit. Input output connections. Move it out a bit. Get more space. And this is where the magic happens. Tab, vector, extrude. I'm pretty sure most of you have not used this note before. This note was meant for doing stuff like um, type, like letters, words, stuff like that. And I found a way to hack it together to turn it into a extreme modifier. So what you do is you take the out mesh and feed it to the vector extrude and then go other and go for input mesh and then after that you just plug the output mesh of the vector extrude into in mesh of the shape node well it's just uh, I missed it there you go so already you have an extruded shell uh, to tweak the settings, you just tweak the, sorry, that's the wrong one. Uh, you tweak the extrude settings by doing this. And if you choose a profile, you can kind of do this. See how it has that slight curve? You do a lot of stacking 
You can do a lot of stuff with it. But you gotta watch out for the artifacts. You just can't um, offset it too much or it'll fold into itself. You can maybe tweak the circle closer to avoid the edges. Okay. I'm gonna show you how to do the bevel now. So what you do is you enable the front bevel. You see how it already does it automatically on the border edges, which is pretty nice, right? You don't have to manually select it. So just tweak it a bit. The annoying part is it doesn't have a button for applying the bevel on the bottom. So I'll, I'll show you how, what the, what you need to do. So basically you find the name of the vector extrude, copy it, and then set attribute vector extrude three dot enable back bevel and then you also want to use that I'm just going to copy that and replace it the correct so what these two thing does is the first one will enable the back bevel and the second will is the back and the front bevel will use the same profile. So I'm going to run that and this should work. As you can see, the bevel is applied on the top and the bottom. See? Still attached. I'm just gonna move it to the side so you can start playing around with the the amount of edges offset uh, you could probably pump it up to 1.2 to get a nicer bevel nicer width on the bevel so you can start doing shit like wow like that like some hard surface sci-fi stuff if you don't like that look you can do something like even this just play around with it see what what you which one you like the most It's kind of like stairs effect. Another cool thing is you can do your custom, your own custom ones. You can start with uh, like a basic one like this one and start messing around with it. Cool, eh? And that's how you do a panel extrude. So before we end this video, I almost forgot to show you how to store the custom profile. So once you're happy with what you did with the, with the profile, you just go to the custom profile and there's an icon right here. That's to save the profile. As you can see, when you save, it just puts it here. You have probably around one, two, three, four, five, six, so 12 custom slots. Not too bad. It'd be nice. It would have been nicer if we can add more than 12, but 
I'll let you know if I discover a way to add more than uh, 12 custom profiles. So you can close that. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you find this quick tip useful.